Today, I'm making this video so that you all can calculate basal areas of forests near you. Uh, I know under the current circumstances, most of you probably didn't leave at spring break with the 10 BAF glass prism in your pop pocket, which is what we've been using to estimate basal areas. So what I'm gonna teach you is how to use angle gauges and how to make angle gauges from stuff around the house or even from your own thumb held at the end of your arm. So to start this off, what I wanna show you is a brief portion of a YouTube video posted a couple years ago by Peter Collin, a consulting forester, and this video does an absolutely excellent job explaining what basal area is for review, and then looking very briefly at the difference between plot sampling and the point sampling we'll be using uh, that involves an angle gauge. So here, let's watch the brief portion of this video. Suppose this sheet of paper were one acre of ground, and suppose this little cookie was a cross-section of one tree on our acre, and that would have a cross-sectional area of one square foot. So the basal area is a measurement of all the cross-sectional areas of all the trees that stand on that acre of ground. So in this particular woods, we have a basal area of 15 square feet per acre of ground. So how do we measure that? One way would be to take a fraction of an acre and sample how many trees fall within that fraction of an acre and average it over several points and add them together to give us an estimation of our basal area. So doing it that way could take a lot of time. So what if instead we were to stand at a certain point within our woods and we were to sweep in a 360 de degree circle, we were to count any tree that was larger than, an, than a specific angle. You use an angle gauge to measure basal area. Okay, that was a great review. And if you had one of these angle gauges, you'd be able to use it. Uh, but again, I don't think many of you have access to one of these right now. Uh, ben Meadows, I believe, has been bought out by forestry suppliers. You could look at ordering one. But let's look at a more economical way where we can do this for free. Um, and so next up, uh, let me share a, a spreadsheet I've made that I'll upload for you. And so you can now see this spreadsheet. Um, and as we look at this spreadsheet, there's a few things going on here. Um, first, I want to direct your attention uh, to this uh, diagram in the middle. So let's briefly review what point sampling is doing. So here, point sampling, you're right here at this triangle. That's your point. There's a little bit of a difference between a prism and an angle gauge. In a prism, remember that the prism refracts light. And so for it to work right, the prism has to be this point center right here, uh, and you spin around the prism. An angle gauge works differently. In an angle gauge, your eye is gonna be the point center. So if you're gonna use an angle gauge, you stand fixed in one spot, you know, plant one heel in the ground, and spin around, trying to keep your eye in the exact same spot. Uh, you saw how Peter Collins spun that angle around on that pin in that sheet of paper. That's what you're trying to do with an angle gauge. Um, so here what you'll do, uh, you'll look and you'll have some object that you hold at a known length from your eye. That's what an angle gauge is because it sets up one angle for us. And so as I look from here this way, okay, what I can see is this is a variable radius point. Bigger trees have bigger radii around them, okay? I'm trying to figure out if my point is in the tree's plot or not. And the tree's plot is determined by its limiting distance. More on that in a moment. And so here, when I look at my angle gauge, this tree ends up appearing wider than my angle gauge. I tally it as in. I continue sweeping to the right. There's a little tree way out here. My angle gauge appears much wider than it. If I'm holding an object out from my eye, that object looks wider than this. And so you can see I'm nowhere near being in that tree's plot. Don't tally it. I keep sweeping to my right. I see this tree, and again, the tree appears wider than the object I'm holding. Tally it, don't tally, don't tally, don't tally. I tally this one. This one's pretty close to me. It's small, but because it's so close, it ends up being wider than the object I'm holding out. I add all those up, I get my count, and I multiply my count by whatever the basal area factor 
is for the particular angle gauge I'm using. So here's where this gets really cool. You have a million angle gauges sitting around your house right now. All you need is a, a tape measure and you can measure the width of any object you find. So say you find a washer in your garage and you tie a string to it. If you measure that washer and that washer happens to be close to 0.545 inches wide, tie a string to it that's 18 inches long. And when you hold one end of that string to your eye and the washer out, so it's 0.545 inches wide, 18 inches from your eye, it has a basal area factor of 10. Spin around in a circle, use it like I just described, and there you go. You have a 10 BAF washer on a string. Uh, say you or your parents or your significant other golf, go grab the putter, measure the length of the putter handle, uh, measure the width of the head of the putter at a particular spot, look it up on this table, find out where it is. Um, if it's not quite close, you know, you could, you know, choke up on the handle, if you will, hold it beside your head so at a specific point on the handle so that it fits just right. And lo and behold, there you go. Maybe you have a 10 BAF putter. Cut yourself out a piece of paper. Anything works as long as you know how far it is from your eye and how wide it is, okay? Uh, we're probably going to use 10 BAF in the south, uh, but I put in BAF 5 and BAF 20 for you here as well. And the diagram over here, uh, that came from a really good publication from 1961 in Wisconsin. I'm going to upload that for you. It's a ton of really good information about basal area. Okay, but there's one more thing I want to draw your attention to over here. You guys don't even need any objects. You can calculate the basal area factor of your own thumb held at arm length. Okay, and so here's what I'm going to do to type in this to show you that it works. Let's go over here and pick something arbitrary. So let's say your arm happened to be 18 inches long and your thumb happened to be 0.545 inches wide. Well, here's thumb width, 0 0.545. Here's arm length. You're typing both these in in inches, 18. Lo and behold, 10 BAF, okay? It's unlikely your thumb will at, at arm length will actually be exactly 10 BAF, but say your thumb ended up being 0.6 inches long and your arm ended up being 23 inches long. Well, you would know your thumb has a BAF of 7.4. So now you can walk out into the woods, spin around with your eye in one spot, your arm held out with your thumb up at arm length. Um, and if the tree's wider than your thumb, you're counting it as in. If it's narrower than your thumb, you're counting it as out. You gotta pick a, a spot of known width on your thumb. Pick your first knuckle, uh, pick right where your thumbnail's the widest. Just pick a spot and know the width of it. That's what you have to do. And use that spot throughout. And then you would get your tally. So say I tallied nine trees doing that in a plot. Well, with my thumb here, 9 times 7.4, um, here I'll type it in for you, equals 9 times 7.4. This is why it's a little less convenient. It's not a nice easy number like 10, but I still know that my basal area was 66.6 .6 square feet per acre on that particular plot, okay? Now, you know, if you look at this cell, look at this calculation up here. Uh, so here I'm making the calculation bar wider. Look at that. That's a heck of a calculation. Uh, this piece you don't even need right here. This is just to make it pretty so that it doesn't put up a bunch of hashtags when you haven't typed anything in yet. So that, that's just making the spreadsheet fancy. This is uh, the meat and potatoes of the calculation right here. So let me show you how we arrived at that calculation in case you're interested. This isn't going to be tested or quizzed on. So here's that same calculation up here at the top written out in a slightly different way. Okay, so I'm looking right up here. Okay, this up here. Now let's break it down piece by piece, and I'm gonna start right in here. A is my arm length, T is my thumb width, right here, and 10, I'm gonna use a 10 inch tree. I could have plugged any other number in here for 10, and it's gonna work just fine. Because I have a 10 here, that same 10 ends up way over here, and so basically this is in the denominator of a fraction, this ends up going in the numerator on top by multiplying it there. And so this and this ultimately cancel out. They're both squared. So they cancel out, which is why I could use any diameter there. But I'm going to stick to a 10-inch tree. So here's how I got this little piece of the equation right here. You can see I'm dividing each of them by 12. I'm using them in inches, and that's going to convert them to feet. That's why they're divided by 12. But here's where it comes into play. Down here, um, I want to draw your attention to this little diagram. And all you're missing down here is limiting distance with this popping up on my screen. But I've got my eye right here. I'm holding my arm out. I've got my thumb up. 
And so I've got this triangle where I know my thumb is creating this specific angle. Well, what I'm imagining doing here is I'm positioning myself, and if I'd drawn this correctly, the thumb would go right to this line right here, but whatever. Um, I'm imagining a situation where I position myself at the exact distance from a 10 inch tree where my thumb appears to be the exact width of that 10 inch tree. And so that's gonna be a borderline tree basically, right? Uh, where when you're using a prism, you can't tell if it's in or out, an angle gauge, it's the same thing. That's my limiting distance. Well, we know if we're using a 10 BAF prism for a, a border tree, the best thing to do is use my plot radius factor, PRF. I know my plot radius factor for 10 BAF is 2.75. And so what I would do with conventional timber cruising, I would go out here, I would wrap a D-tape around this tree because I wouldn't actually know its diameter yet, right? I would find out it was 10.0 inches. You want to go to decimals on that. I would multiply it by 2.75. So 10 times 2.75 gives me 27.5 feet. And I would know that my limiting distance here was 27.5 feet, okay? Think back to the diagram I showed you on that spreadsheet with all the trees with their different plot sizes around them. For a 10-inch tree, that 27.5 is the circle around that tree. If you're within 27.5 feet of the tree, you count it. If you're further away, you don't count it. So here's how this math works using similar triangles. If I divide my thumb width by my arm length in inches, it's going to equal the width of this 10-inch tree, 10 inches, um, divided by this limiting distance which would happen to be 27.5. And if I algebraically resolve this, I wanna solve this equation algebraically for limiting distance. I would multiply both sides of the equation by limiting distance. So I would get limiting distance right here in the equation. LD times T over A equals 10. And then I would multiply it by the inverse of T and A. I would multiply it by A over T. And so I ultimately end up with this equation, A times 10 over T. That's where this piece came from. And if I had a 10 BAF thumb and arm, this would be 27.5 feet after I convert all this um, to feet by dividing it by 12. So if my thumb was 10 BAF, this number is now 27.5. It is the plot size of a 10 inch tree. So that's really cool. So it's a radius. It's given me a radius. So look at what I do next. I take that radius, I square it, I multiply it by pi. Now I have an area in square feet of the plot size for my 10 inch tree, okay? So I've got the area in square feet. Look what I do next, 43,560 over the square feet that that 10 inch tree represents um, in, in terms of how big its plot is. And this tells me now how many 10 inch tree plots I can fit per acre. So this whole quantity is just telling me trees per acre, okay? So I know how many uh, of those 10 inch tree plots will fit on one acre of land. Okay, the next thing I wanna know is, well, what's the basal area of a 10 inch tree? 10 squared times 0 0.005454. This tells me, of course, you can see that's 100. So I get rid of these two decimals. And so it's 0.5454 square feet per tree. That's what it is. So 0.5454 square feet per tree times how many trees they represent. Lo and behold, this number is the basal area factor parameterized for your thumb width and your arm length. So that's how that equation works. So that was a little complicated, a little convoluted. If you don't fully understand it, that's okay. Use the spreadsheet. This is what the spreadsheet does. It works. So now you can go and create your own angle gauges around the house or use your thumb as an angle gauge. And in your stand description exercises this week in field silviculture, you'll be able to go and give me basal areas on stands in your area that you can safely go to. That's all for today. Uh, move on to the next section of the course.